This portion of the news brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's. I'm loving it. Today is Fox Hill Day and thousands of Fox Hillians along with other residents in the country are celebrating their historic roots. Cyan Thompson tells us that among, the, among those celebrating Fox Hill Day is Prime Minister the Right Honorable Perry Christie, member for Fox Hill, the Honorable Fred Mitchell, and members of the cabinet who visited four churches within that community including St. Paul's, Macedonia, Mount, Mount Carey, and St. Mark's Baptist churches. Holding true to their tradition, talented, vibrant and bold youngsters played a major part in the Fox Hill Day services from singing to reciting scripture and poems. Roses are red, violets are blue, you're the best one ever. Prime Minister Christie has participated in the Fox Hill Day festivities for more than a decade now. He talks about the importance of commemorating this day. The culture of Fox Hill seems to have been preserved more than any other settlement of slaves in the country. And so what distinguishes Fox Hill? is that they have found a way to continue through the years and years and generations, right, the importance of passing on to children, right, their roots. During the services, several students were presented with checks from the Fox Hill Day Committee to assist in their tuition for college. Member for Fox Hill, the Honorable Fred Mitchell. We just heard last week that this has been a tradition since Emancipation Day. But we know that Fox Hill Day itself has been celebrated since at least 1870. Fox Hill Day wraps up Tuesday night with cultural activities at their community park. For the ZNS Network News, I'm Cyan Thompson. Opposition leader Dr. Hubert Minnis and several opposition members of parliament toured the critical care block this morning at the PMH. Jim Anita Swain tonight tells us that based on what he's seen, the former health minister is pleased with the project so far. Former Health Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis says he is satisfied with the construction of the new critical care block. In fact, he defended the amount of beds in the intensive care unit. On Monday during government's tour, the Health Minister Dr. Perry Gomez expressed concern with the number of beds in the ICU. Dr. Minnis says the number of beds were scientifically determined through a utilization review survey. 20 beds is quite adequate. We would have done disease distribution survey. We have done utilization survey, we have done disease pattern, and therefore we would have known exactly how many beds are needed at this particular time. Dr. Minnis says there is room for an additional nine beds if the need arises. However, he adds that the new facility definitely offers the latest and cutting edge technology. With this type of technology though, that patient can be on the operating theater, and if another opinion is necessary, um, they can beam in, be it to John Hopkins, Harvard, or any institution, and they can get that second opinion. And if the surgeon is not certain of a particular procedure, he can be assisted by a specialist from throughout the world, be it Germany, Japan, the U.S., or whatever. Although not indicating what the maternity and child health care wing would cost when the last administration looked at it for phase two, Dr. Minnis says it should now be started. And I think even if the government were to come to Parliament and said that they wanted to proceed with the maternity wing and child wing and ensure that we have proper delivery facilities, I can assure you, speaking as leader of opposition, that we would have no objection. Director of the Public Hospitals Authority, Herbert Brown, says it's only a matter of time before the facility is complete. Today, the 66,000 square feet facility is 95% complete. The, the, the facility will be handed over to the Public Hospitals Authority in October of this year. Uh, following that process, we will do our own review. Uh, and when we are satisfied that an occupancy certificate would have been issued, uh, then we will begin the process of commissioning. Mr. Brown says about 200 employees will be in this new building when it opens later this year. Jiminita Swain, ZNS Network News. 
A leading private health care facility is ready to get the ball rolling now that government has passed the stem cell research and therapy bill. President of Doctors Hospital Health System Dr. Barry Rassen says stem cell research can now become another core element of its pioneering medical tourism program. I'm very excited about what's happening. I'm glad that the government has approved it and once they have published those regulations and we can get started, then Doctors Hospital wants to be a part of that. We already have plans in place. We have agreements with specialists uh, from Argentina to Florida who are very familiar with stem cell treatment, how to use it. I like the fact that they're regulated because you don't want people coming in and everybody doing things that they shouldn't be doing. Let's make sure it's done right. Obviously, Doctors Hospital is all about quality and doing it the best possible way. Well, in wrapping up debate on the bill last week, the Prime Minister highlighted the fact that the industry has grown tremendously and will continue to grow over the next decade. But critical to that is ensuring that the necessary legal framework is in place to police all stem cell research activities which could take place in the country. Well, I've seen the first draft. I don't know if they've changed. If they haven't changed, then I have no problem with what's in them. Uh, there's a committee that will oversee and approve, and we're ready to take our request an application to that committee so that we can get started and, and hopefully by early next year we will have a lab in place and we'll be able to do stem cell treatments. A number of bills instrumental to the country's financial services sector were passed in Parliament yesterday, among them the Business Companies Act, Segregated Accounts Companies Act and the International Tax Cooperation Act. Also tabled was the Foreign Accounts Tax Compliance Act. Bringing this communication was the Member of Parliament for Elizabeth, the Honorable Ryan Pinder, who also holds a portfolio of Minister of Financial Services. Mr. Pinder explains that FACTA compliance can be achieved in two ways. In Model 1, FFIs entered into direct agreement with the IRS or Model 2 through intergovernmental agreement, according to Minister Pinder. The Bahamas has chosen Model 1. FACTA came into force on the 1st of January 2013 and has the effect of imposing new reporting requirements on financial institutions throughout the world to United States Internal Revenue Service with respect to certain information on U.S. persons and requires non-U.S. entities to provide specific attestations about U.S. owners. Financial institutions that do not comply with FACTA requirements face a 30% withholding tax on all of their U.S. payments and will be deemed non-participating foreign financial institutions. Well, as the country awaits word on the referendum that could signal the start of exploratory oil dr drilling in Bayman waters, BPC has had its license renewed recently. Minister of the Environment Ken Dorsett, however, noted that this came with some conditions. He assured that no drilling will take place without the regulatory framework in place, and this is something the government is aggressively working toward. The, the Attorney General's office is working on that matter. They have uh, given me a timeline of by the end of the year. However, the Attorney General has indicated that she intends to expedite that time frame. Um, having regard, uh, I believe, to um, uh, the constant requests from my office uh, to do so. But uh, I think that the people of the Bahamas should understand that before anything is done, um, we need to ensure that the Bahamas is well prepared for it, and that not only talks, not only is not in, that is not only with respect to the legislative and regulatory framework, but the capacity um, to address these things. Well, still ahead, a world champion looks to pick up another title. And a hurdler tries to clear a path to the final. We've got the latest. You're watching the Bahamas tonight. This portion of the news was brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. This is Uriah Fidelity Business News. I'm Jiminita Swain. 
Minister of Financial Services Ryan Pinder says Model 1 Intergovernmental Agreement for Reporting under the U.S. Foreign Account Tax Compliance Act or FACTA provides the greatest level of preferential treatment in terms of exemptions for key Bahamian products. Minister Pinder in his communication to the House on Monday said the Model 1 Agreement provides the greatest control for the Bahamas government and its financial institutions over interactions between the IRS and Bahamian financial institutions. While thousands of New Yorkers will be looking up as a new promotional campaign launched this week to showcase the Bahamas, the message, a video ad featuring Bahamian model Shakira Ladard that aired during the Super Bowl will now be shown on a jumbotron in Times Square. The video billboard will run through the rest of the year with several spots per day and can also be viewed from two directions. This promotion is expected to provide exposure and visibility of the islands of the Bahamas to hundreds of thousands of people that transit the area daily. And it seems Greece is beating its budget targets by a wide margin this year. The Associated Press is reporting that the figures from the Finance Ministry show that the country's painful co cost cuts and tax increases combined with international bio funds are paying off. The economy, however, remains in recession and unemployment at a record high. That was your Royal Fidelity Business News. I'm